In this video, I'm going to share with you how to do data analysis using SPSS. So before we start anything, you need to know how to do your data setting. Yeah, so let's get into it. So what do we mean by data setting here? Yeah, so I assume that at this stage, at least there is a model of framework for your study. So what do I mean by a model or a framework? So in my case here, the data that I'll be discussing with you, it's about the e-waste recycling intention yeah, among housewives. So I'm using a TPB model where I have the attitude of housewives yeah, for e-waste recycling. I have the subjective norm and I have the perceived behavioral control. Okay, and I want to see how these three variables are going to affect their intention for e-waste recycling intention, yeah? So you should be having this model, yeah, which is based on your theoretical underpinning, based on the literature review that you have done. Next, you should have constructed your survey questionnaire. You have gone through all the vetting process and at this stage, your questionnaire is solid. So what do I mean here is, you have a few demographic variables, yeah, which I've not shown here. You have your construct. So in our case here, we have discussed, we have one, two, three, four constructs. Yeah, we'll talk about marker variables later. So you can see to measure attitude, I have three items here. ATTR, which is attitude, yeah, for the recycling behavior. So I have just put a label here, yeah, so that it'll be easier for me to identify the item. So for attitude, I have three items. For subjective norm, I have three items. For perceived behavioral control, I have four items. And for intention, I have three items over here. Yeah. So this is the information yeah, that we would want to transfer into SPSS, yeah, assuming you have already collected your data. So you have your theoretical framework, you have your survey questionnaire, and if you're going to work with SPSS, I'm sure you have already collected your data yeah so let me show you how you are going to key in your data into spss from your main spss interface yeah, what you need to do is that you need to select a new data set yeah so you click here so this is the interface that you'll have yeah and i want you to look over here yeah and bring your attention over here where you have data view and you have a variable view so you can see at present, we are at data view here. So at the rows here, you can see what do I mean by one, two, three, four, and so on. These are your respondents later on. Yeah. And over here, I have the variables at the column section. So this is going to be all your variables and they're going to be even your items later on. Yeah. As we're going to key in our data. So you can see your variable here are totally empty. Yeah, so what you have to do first is you need to identify your variables before you key in your data. So in order for you to key in your variables and identify your variables, you need to go to variable view. So now when you look at variable view, now one, two, three, four, it's no longer your respondents, but they are your variables. Okay, so again here, data view, these are your respondents yeah, on the uh, row section where when you go to variable, these are going to be your number of variables here. So what you can do first is, yeah, usually whenever we have our survey questionnaire, it's definitely going to have a certain ID yeah, so that it's easier for you to identify your respondents okay, or for you to go back and search your questionnaire if there's going to be any issues. So first here you can key in as ID. And usually when you click type, okay, it will be numeric. You don't have to bother much about width. Decimal points, I like to change it to zero, yeah, because there would not be any decimal points. But if you have data, yeah, if it has which has decimal points, then you can identify how many decimal points you want it to be, yeah. Next, label. This is very important. So what you want to do is that you want to label. So what is this ID? ID refers to respondents ID. Okay, so it means that this is your respondents ID. Values, yeah, there's nothing. There's no values for ID, especially. You don't have to do anything. Don't have to disturb missing value. Okay, I'll come to that shortly. Columns, leave it. Measures, you can even leave it, but I'll just put here scale. Okay. So let's say 
our first demographic variable was age. Okay, so that is your uh, name here, age. Yeah. Type, numeric. Decimal points, no decimal points. Obviously, there would not be decimal points for age. So you're going to label here. So what is this? This is respondents' age. Now, values here, you see, we're not going to put any values. Why? Assuming, okay, I'm assuming that we have got a solid number. That means when you ask your respondents, it was not in a range. You ask them exactly what's their age. 27, 28, 30, 60, or so on. Yeah? Missing values. Okay, now, what is the purpose of missing value? Okay, sometimes when your respondents don't key in the data, okay, you can actually... Um, identify missing values, okay? But I'm not going to be very concerned about missing values when I'm talking about demographic variables, but we'll be very concerned about missing values when we talk about our uh, independent and dependence variable later or, of, or talking about our constructs, yeah? So I'm going to leave it blank here. And I'm going to put the measure will be scale, yeah? So what we're going to do, most of the variables, it will be on scale measures. Why? Because scale, once when you determine they are scale variables, they allow you to do so many other analysis. Yeah. But if you go over here, you can see they are ordinal, they are nominal. Okay. Uh, you can identify them, you can specify them, but it would be better for you to put it on scale. Yeah. It will help you in your uh, forthcoming analysis. So the next variable, yeah, the demographic variable that I would want to key in is let's say gender. Yeah. And it's a numeric variable, decimal points, I'll change it to zero. And I'm going to specify or label it. Yeah. So I'll say it's respondents gender. Yeah. Now, in the values, what I'm going to do is that I need to specify. Yeah. So when I key in later in my SPSS, let's say if the value is one, I want SPSS to identify that as male. I click add. And if I key in two, I want SPSS to identify that as female. Add. And I click OK. Yeah. And the measure again, I'm going to select scale. So this is how you're going to key in all your demographic variables. And once you have key in your demographic variables, you're going to key in your constructs. Yeah. Let me just go back to the uh, slides just now. So can you see over here? For attitude, there are three items, and I have a coding for each item. Yeah, ATTR1, ATTR2, and I have for subjective norm and perceived behavioral control as well. So if you see, I've put the, num the one behind. Yeah, You have to put the number behind. Why? Because SPSS would not be able to identify or it will show you an error if you put the uh, number at the beginning. Yeah. So this is what we want to key in now. Yeah. I'm sure yeah, for your survey, you have... For your first item, you have a Likert scale, yeah, probably a 5 scale or 6 scale or 10 scale. And probably it will be from uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Yeah. So let's go back to SPSS. So over here, I'm going to put ATTR1. No decimal points. And I need to specify what it is. Yeah. So usually what I do, I go back to my questionnaire, my survey. So over here, I'm going to pick up the question. I'm going to copy. Then I'm going to go back to my SPSS and paste it here. Yeah, you can go to file. You can just, uh, yeah, sorry, you go to edit and you can paste. Yeah, so I've already pasted the label over here. Now values. So now I need to key in all the values. So number one, it will be strongly disagree yeah add and if you put in two it will be disagree three is neutral four agree sorry you put here four okay agree And number five, it will be strongly agree. Okay, so you have your five scales here. You click OK. Next, what you will do, measure, it will be scale. So now I have to key in for all the items. Now, 
what usually I do, I'll just click here, copy, paste. Why? Because now you see for all the scale, okay, it's going to be the same. Okay, the measure is going to be scale plus all the values is again going to be the same. So I don't have to key in all one by one. Yeah, I just copy and paste. But what I have to change is I need to change the label and I need to change the name. Yeah, so I go over here. I change it to ATTR2 and I will change this as well. Yeah. So what I can do is I can go back to my questionnaire, copy the second item and paste it over here. So once I have completed, yeah, key in all this information, yeah, all your variables, this is how it will look. So you can see I have all the variables here, yeah, starting from your ID, your respondent's ID or your survey ID, age, income, ethnicity, academic qualifications. I have all my uh, variables here, yeah, attitude, I have the subjective norm, I have the perceived behavioral control, I have the intention, and I also have the marker variable. So this is how it will look like. And if I go into data view, can you see now here at the rows is your respondent and over here now at the columns are all the items. So what you can do now is that you can start key in the data. So you take up your survey. So let's say the first survey, you just put there number one. Yeah, That is your ID. Then you key in the age. It was 23. Income was how much? Let's say 1000. Okay, it was a solid, if, it, if it was a solid value. And ethnicity was Chinese, Malay, Indian. So we have already coded. Yeah, if one, it's Malay. So you key in one. Academic qualification. If the if the uh, respondent has uh, a PhD qualification, maybe it's four. Yeah, based on your classification. And what are the uh, responses that they've given? Yeah, for the first item, let's say if it's going to be four, then the second item is going to be five. So you key in all this information. Yeah. So this is how you do it. For me personally, what I prefer is before yeah, I key in information directly into SPSS, I would prefer to key in the information using Microsoft Excel. Yeah. So what I do is the same information that I have in the columns, ID, age, income, ethnicity, I will also create the same thing in the Excel as well. Yeah. Let me just show you. So if you look into the Microsoft Excel over here, you can see the items here on top here. Yeah, the uh, variables are exactly like the ones that I've keyed in in SPSS. I have the ID, age, income, ethnicity, academic qualifications, and so forth. Now I prefer doing this first. Yeah, key in in Excel. Why? Because before you proceed with your data analysis, you need to do data cleaning. Yeah, and uh, if you key in your data over here, it'll be much easier. Why? Because you can clean your data, okay, which can be done using Excel, and then you transfer your data into SPSS. So you need to do both. You create your SPSS um, setting first, but the data key in using Excel, you clean your data, and then you copy and paste your data in the section, which is data view. <laughs>